In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily overclock your Ryzen 5000 system by about 10% over stock settings. So whatever you get delivered, you're going to get a 10% boost by following this easy overclock guide. So this system's got a Ryzen 9 5950X. That's a 16 core monster processor. And the first step will be that you need some benchmark software. And I use Cinebench R20, it's free. There's R15 and R23, but I've always used 20. So the first thing is to go type it into Google, Cinebench R20 download, and download the software so you have a base reading of what how your system performs to compare it against when you overclock it using this easy guide. I've also got hardware info. It's not necessary to have this software, but it does allow you to monitor your system. Like it produces nice graphs to keep track over the system over time and a table. And it's free, hardware info. So you could look at that, but it's not necessary. But I've got it to show me the average clock of the CPU, uh, the die temperature, so I know how hot it's getting. It's currently at 35 degrees idle. CPU coolant temperature, that's the 360 millimeter rad in this system. And the uh, radiator fan, one of the radiator fans has got three on them. And how much power the CPU is using, currently what, around 50 watts, so it's idle and it's powering these three screens why it's 30 RTX 3080 graphics card so you've downloaded the first step which is the software and now is to run the first benchmark so here we go that's step one done download and run your benchmark software if you've not already got one like there's lots of software out there such as ADA64 but I prefer R20 because I've used it for years and it doesn't put any overhead on the system so it gives you a good baseline like I say I've got a lot of apps open because I've been using the system but it will give a good base reading to compare against oh, the CPU's gone up 3.7 gigahertz uh, watts peaked at 123 watts everything else is the temperature went up to 59 degrees maximum and we've got a baseline reading for this 5950x of 920 9223 points so that's the baseline score of this system now if this system was a fresh install no software running nothing then this score would be around 9500 so obviously it's a little bit lower because I've got programs open browsers uh, a couple of browsers Excel I've even got a obviously got this monitor hardware info and other software running in the background light software not heavy but we're gonna boost that by 10% now I'm going to show you step 2 so step 2 again go to Google and type in AMD Ryzen Master and that will lead you to the download page for the Ryzen Master software and click download and you'll be prompted to install it and you'll get a little warning message when you start it up click OK warning you know about warranty we don't matter about it because you're doing simple overclock click ok and raise the rising master there it jumps to this screen let's move it over to the middle screen so step two you've downloaded rising master and what do you do well this is what you do it's currently set to default and also if you notice you've got temperature and other gauges at the top wattage so you don't need separate monitoring software it's just I've, I've been using hardware info for a long time and I like it but Ryzen Master also gives you gauges and graphs to monitor your system easily from the home 
from first start up you can see everything so what do you do to overclock it simply you click go to create go to one any one of the modes any more one of the modes and click position boost overdrive that's all you do click position boost overdrive yeah so this is step two and then I click apply at the bottom yeah it's done now let's have a look if I go home go back to creator so you set to position boost overdrive that's it simple now you can click home so you can monitor the temps if you don't have any other software installed and from there you can monitor the temperatures or you can just exit the app you can even exit it now you don't need it now that you've set it and let's run Cinebench R20 again for step 3 to see how much the system has overclocked by it will look at these graphs here so it was 3.7 gigahertz about 3.8 nearly stock wattage was 123 watts that's why it's running Cinebench R20 actually maximum could go up to about 140 at stock so this is what Cinebench R20 drew from the system so now step 3 we're going to run the the Cinebench R20 again and see how much it's been overclocked by I'm expecting between 8 and 10 percent so at least 10,200 maybe higher 10,400 let's see if we can get higher than 10,500 click run and off it goes there uh, look CPU temperatures jumped Ooh, you will get higher temperature clocks 4.4 gigahertz wattage 227 and it's already nearly finished that's it Look at the wattage 228 look at that previous peak temperature oh it's gone up to a toasty 81 degrees so you do need cooling and now it's finished and the temperature's back down it was 4.4 gigahertz against 3.8 and the temperature went from uh, around 60 to 80 and wattage went from 120 to 230 nearly so what's the score? Is it higher than 10,500 or not? Whoa! Look at that. That is instant overclocking. And that's not 10%, that's more like 15% overclock. So this system is now overclocked by 15%. Like I say, if it was a fresh install, I'd probably be getting 9,500 to 9,600. But if it was a fresh install, this score would be higher. It'd be around 10,800. So I, I've got uh, between 12 and 15 percent overclock just by hitting that button. Position boost overdrive. Now you can do it from within uh, the BIOS. In fact. What you could do is take the settings that it's using and put them into the BIOS. That's what I would do. That would be the next step, step four. Activate position over boost in your BIOS. But you can, this, I'm showing you how to easily overclock your system without rebooting, without going into the BIOS. And there's the results, the system's fine. The, Ryzen processor can go up to 90 degrees, so it's well below the max 81 Obviously that's under full load. You're not going to be under full load most of the time And the cooler managed to control it well Wattage jumped that's where the heat comes from the wattage That's why I like to monitor watts That's a better indicator than The rest basically higher the wattage the more temps you'll get and there we go we got 4.4 boost just by hitting one button in Ryzen Master 
that's your easy three step process to overclocking can't get any easier so you they are advanced options in here you know you can go to the advanced settings and continue this auto overclock and this manual overclock but I'll leave that for another video for now stick to the easy safe overclock which is position over boost from rising master like I said the next step would be to boot into your BIOS and activate say position over over position boost overdrive in your BIOS and XMP for your memory that would be the next step but this is an easy 10 to 15 percent boost for your Ryzen processor whatever it's running now you'll get a boost of a, between 10 and 15 percent I got I think about if my math is correct it's about 14 and a half percent boost yeah and it's the exact same system nothing's changed nothing all I did was activate click that button position boost overdrive and it's running nearly 15 percent faster 14 and a half percent just by clicking one button and the reason why it's running because it's increased the wattage from 120 to 230 that's obviously results in a higher temp uh, 81 against 60 that's the price you pay that's why you need good cooling and uh, gigahertz max average clock speed went not max average clock went from 3 point just below 3.8 to just above 4.4 that's what you get when you use position over now you could do a single core test they will probably fall slightly so that's the price you pay when you get all over core overclocks but it's back to normal operation like you're saying it's not like you boost it permanently the system operates as normal but it's got that extra infinite 10% boost extra peak for when you need it not even the wattage is back to normal 44 watts idle this is why I like uh, hardware info it's easy to monitor your system I'm sure uh, Ryzen Master's got graphs in it as well yeah, when you look go through the various settings but for now easy overclock is with Ryzen Master that's a three step process number one download a benchmarker any software any will do oh, I use R20 because it's I've been using it for years and it's easy it's not a load on the system like some uh, so you have a base reading of what your system's like which was 9228 and step two download Ryzen master software install it and then set it to position boost overdrive there are other people they call PBOs the other other PBOs PBO 2 3 4 you know once you get into overclocking you can fine-tune it and step you can fine-tune the various overclocking but you're not gonna get the boost you got from this 10 to 15 percent boost you might get I don't know another two to four percent but there'll be a price to pay in temps so there will be a price to pay it's not a free lunch yeah so maybe um, overclocking the memory you can get away with some another couple of percent so maybe maximum another five percent not more than that but this is the easy old and plus you can have a a lot of headache fine-tuning it because in to determine where the system's stability lies here it's completely stable didn't even have to reboot just download it run it that's it and then step three is of course you have to run the benchmark software again to see the results and this one's got 14 and a half percent just by clicking one button this system is now 14 and a half percent more powerful faster at under load under maximum load than it was obviously 
everyday usage is not going to make any difference because obviously there's a huge gap between normal usage and peak usage like normally I won't even get halfway near the peak so it won't make any difference to day to day uses but when you're doing CPU intensive uh, tasks such as rendering or computations if you do machine learning then it will make a difference but even for gaming I don't think you know if you've got a 5950X it's not going to make any difference in gaming either I mean, you know, maybe if you got a 6 core processor it might for a 16 core processor it's not going to even affect gaming but it's good to have that to maximize your processor's capability after all you paid for it and you get an extra 10 to 15 percent boost just by following this simple three-step guide download the uh, benching software or if you already got it installed to download Ryzen master and click position boost overdrive and step three run the benchmark software again and look at the results see that was 9228 just a few minutes ago now it's 10567 and you can go into the world of overclocking fine tune it and you'll probably get if I fine tune this system you know not using stock settings like fine tuned memory and per core overclocks and whatever and getting the best cores to run to right settings on the best cores and I probably could get over 11,000 probably 11,200 something like that something like that so you get a you know, decent boost maybe four or five percent extra but that's going to take work and there will be a price to pay in temps and uh, system instability you know the hotter it gets the less stable the system get the higher the clocks the less stable this is safe 4.4 is safe at a push you could probably get this stable to 4.6 above that and you're going to be unstable System going to be prone to instability above 4.6. Then it obviously it depends on silicon quality, how good your processor is. You, with position boost overdrive, uh, I think this is a fair CPU. It's not one of the bad ones. Look, at, see, that's what you look at the temps for. See how I, you know, the temps get. It's not 81. You got some room there. For at least another 100 megahertz 150 so i could probably get this to 4.55 4.6 even i don't think it's go above that 4.6 plus will be unstable unstable yeah anyway that's your quick guide to overclocking a ryzen 5000 processor easy three step you can't get easy in that can you and what i would do next is just log into BIOS and activate position boost overdrive so you don't need to be running the Ryzen master software not unless you want to monitor the temps you know you don't even have to have the software running if you set it in BIOS that would be the next step activate position boost overdrive in BIOS